welcome back to Labencroft. Go to Susie Q's. This afternoon, we are heading over to Susie Q's, our local ice cream shop, uh, to get a little ice cream. And today we have Sadie yeah, with Come us. Come on, so we got you. Sadie is the oldest dog. She is going to be 12 this year in September. Um, are you driving today? Hey, get over here on your side. Come on, Sadie. Get over here on your side. Come on, get on your side. Here we go. Sit. Let's go get ice cream. All right. Here we go. And she likes a good truck ride too. All right. Here we go. And here we are at Susie Q's. And everybody comes to get a pup cup because they don't charge for pup cups at Susie Q's. Every time you got an order, you need a pup cup. And we need a pup cup. And watch for it. Just one. There's a dog bone on top. Sadie. Oh. There goes that dog bone. It's always the first to go. All right, Parker, can you get it for me? Yeah, everybody likes a good treat, even our four-legged kids. Not a good truck ride, too. All right, come on. Did you enjoy your ice cream? I know that was really good. Hey. This is load up time. We're heading over to the fairgrounds. Um, Forge Dog Club is every Wednesday. Here we go, and we are off to social ops with the other friends of ours and their dogs. Porch dog program is really great, yeah. You get to spend time with friends and you get to learn all about new training skills and teaching your dog new things. Samantha Bayless is the leader and director of our club. Helps to organize all the training sessions, getting the ring set up, uh, putting out the programs to make sure there's a standard. Um, every every 4-H'er kid and their dog has to meet by the 
how many years the kid has been in the dog program and how many years the dog has been in the program. But the interesting thing to watch here is that there are three sections. You're going to do agility. You're going to do obedience, which is what we're working on here. And you're also going to do showmanship. But that same dog has to do all three disciplines. You can't trade out dogs. This is Rosie's third time showing this sheep this time. And this is Deacon's first time. Rosie, this is kind of old hat, but every year she has to be able to perform more difficult tasks in the ring. And every now and then you gotta take a bathroom break because you don't wanna do it in the ring, because if you do it in the ring, that will cost you 10 point deduction. And I'm just hoping she can have a clean run in that bathroom break area because the last two years with each of her dogs, she has ended up having a 10 point deduction. So you notice Ro Rosie here in Parker, uh, Rosie, all of her exams for exam are off leash, whereas the others, their dogs were an earlier year and an earlier time frame in their training session. And so they still have to do theirs on leash. This here is called figure eight. And uh, you have uh, Two pylons or pillars. Um, those are often done by adult humans, uh, moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas. Um, right here on the left, we have Kim, my wife, and on the right, we have Susie, which is grandma. And Parker has yet to get this to his level where he needs to be. Um, Rosie will need to be off leash to compete in this category. And the interesting thing about the program is it's, it's all about points. So as you go along, you have a total amount of points you could get. And then for every fault or area where you fail to do something at the standard, you lose points. And so you're having first year kids, first year dogs competing with 10 year kids and 10 year dogs. And you can actually have a first year kid, first year dog beat a 10 year kid and dog. Because they did their, their section for their, their age and standard better than the older kid. And here is Anna and Deacon getting ready to do their figure eight. And for this, well, this is Anna's third year. This is Deacon's first year. So he's not required to do the figure eight off leash.
And you might wonder why you, you have to use a person for the pillars or pylons. And that's because it's a tempting opportunity for a dog to take a sniff. Um, and they're not supposed to do that when they're working for their human. And you also have to watch in this area because like for every start and stop, the judge is looking to make sure that the handler is starting on the leg closest to the dog because the dog is technically supposed to watch that leg to work at heel. And this area, this is a return to your dog off leash. And now it's time for the agility setup. And what everybody doesn't understand is these kids will have to set up the entire agility course and tear it down every time we meet. And that is a lot of obstacles and A frame, dog walk, jumps of all kinds of various weave poles. And it's a lot to set that up and take that down. Um, these training sessions um, and gatherings once a week and they start in mid April. These kids put in a lot of time in their 4-H project with their dogs. And it's also a great time of camaraderie because the kids get to help each other with their dogs if the dog is having a problem with one of the jumps or one of the, the tasks on the course, um, they get to help their, their fellow 4 h -er, their dog to, to come up with the task and teaching. So it's a, it's a lot of, of teaching and a lot of sharing your knowledge that you've learned with years of experience and helping each other succeed. And it's great to watch the kids grow together and their dogs to mature together. Now the evening is done. Jelly finishes up around 8 to 8.30, depending on what all is going on. Um, unfortunately, in the beginning part, until around July 1st, Susie Q's is not open, so you cannot stop back by and get a pup cup. So that's kind of a bummer, but after July 1st, always a great place to go. Well, it is now six weeks, and if you've been following along on the other uh, weekly blog or our live channel, you know that uh, Gracie's puppies got weaned about three to four days ago uh, in preparation for this big day. We're going to wean it, and then we're going to give the first rounds of vaccinations, and so we need them off of mom uh, for a good three days. Um, so they don't get any uh, small antibodies from mom's milk to get them ready to get their first vaccinations. We use Pyrantel and another wormer. We alternate every two weeks. Uh, we need a little alcohol to uh, put the site for the shot. And then we do a seven-way vaccination here. 
Entertainment Croft. There are seven different viruses that we uh, protect the puppies against. We're going to make a little pocket in the skin, and that's called sub -Q's, where we're going to inject the, the vaccine. Prep our site with some alcohol, um, 91%, to make sure that we don't have anything on the surface that we could take in. For our puppy, we want to get a shot. Here we go, little poke. All done. And now for the wormer. Um, the player and tail, the puppy seem to really, really actually don't mind it, kind of like it. It, it. it smells like bubble gum, so it must taste like that, I guess. Um, but they always seem to just lap it right up. And so we will do all the puppies in the litter. Here we go. A little bit at a time. Yum, yum, yum. This is what we call the whelp suite here at Labancroft. As you can see, this is Wendy over here. She's in the other whelp suite. This is what we collectively call the evening romp. It's a time for the puppies to get out and explore the world and, and just kind of go unfettered. Um, people always wonder if we've lost one not lost one yet in all these years. Um, it's just a great time for them to get to see the world. Ow! Can't This is uh, Grandma and Grandpa, also known as Chuck and Susan. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
agility work there. <laughs> now we promised you a mystery guest. This is Joseph the cat who thinks he's a small Labrador retriever and he just loves being mauled by the puppies plays with them it's just amazing well thanks for joining us come back next week to see all the things that are going on here at Labencroft <laughs>